There they go. Three-day bender is quick at the break and on the early lead. Back his boys up on the outside. De Niro, memorandums at the rail. Nearly trailer, Dapper Don. As they pass by us now for the first time, three-day bender shows the way. Pressing up on the outside is De Niro. Memorandum covered up down on the inside in third. Followed by Dapper Don. Back his boys on the outside in fifth. About six off the lead. As they run to the half-mile mark, the opening quarter, 23-1. and one. And three-day bender takes the field to the box stretch with a length and a bit lead. Memorandum's down on the inside. De Niro's on the outside. They've opened up four on Dapper Don and Becca's boy. As they run to the 5 6 deeds marker now, it is on the inside. Three-day bender on the outside. De Niro, Memorandum's lost ground. Two lengths further back now is Dapper Don and Becca's boy. Half one up, 46 and four. Three sixteenths from home. And on the inside, three day bender. On the outside, De Niro. It's about five or six back now to Memorandum. And on the outside, Dapper Don. Down the lane they come. It is three day bender with the lead. Three day bender now pulls away by five. Three day bender to win it. De Niro second, Memorandum third, Dapper Don. And back is boy. There they go. They've all come away well with Queen of Love. From the rail now, Silk Stilettos drives up on the outside. Ivers Lunar right there, Pineapple Tidbits. Early trailer, Zeta Marie. Rounding the far turn, Silk Stilettos now sprints away by two and a half. It is Irish Lunar, closest pursuer. Three lengths back, Queen of Love. Then a length and a half back, Pineapple Tidbits. Zeta Marie, the trailer. Zeta Marie about nine off the lead. Through the stretch, the opening quarter is solid, 23 and one. And Silk Stiletto's out there on her own by two and a half. Irish Luna tracks in second. It's about five back to Queen of Love. Pineapple Tidbits, Zeta Marie still the trailer. Into the clubhouse turn they go. The half comes up on the board now in 46 and four. And Silk Stiletto's goes past the half mile marker now with a two and a half or three length lead. It is Irish Luna second by four. Pineapple Tidbits, Queen of Love, Zeta Marie yet to get underway. Midway on the back stretch, and now three furlongs from home. And Silk Stilettos is clear by two and a half. Irish Luna still sitting in second. Queen of Love's on the outside of Pineapple Tidbits. Zeta Marie now only six and a half off the lead. Quarter mile from home, six furlongs is solid. 111 and three. Silk Stilettos confronted by Irish Luna. Here's Zeta Marie closing at the rail. Pineapple Tidbits and Queen of Love. And down the lane they come. New leader, it's Irish Luna. Irish Luna leads it by a length and a half. Silk Stilettos, Zeta Marie still closing, but time is running out. Irish Luna will win it. Zeta Marie will be second. Silk Stilettos third. Pineapple Tidbits and Queen of Love.
There they go. Belcara Park as quick as his bull darts. They vie for the early lead. Smart Lad gets away in third, set to shine his fourth. Through the stretch for the first time, it's the Philly. Belcara Park on the inside. On the outside, bull darts putting pressure on. They've opened up three and a half on Smart Lad, two and a half for the back. Is the trailer set to shine? Into the clubhouse turn they go. From the rail, it's Belcara Park by a nose. Bull dart second by five. It's Smart Lad in third by two and a half and set to shine is fourth. The opening quarter, 21 and one. Three furlongs to run, they're locked together. Belcara Park and Bull Arch. It's only three lengths back now to Smart Lad and two to set to shine. They're all creeping a little closer. The half, 44 and one. Quarter mile from home, and now Bold Arch with the lead. Here comes Smart Lad ranging up on the outside. Set to shine, is ready to pounce. And Belcara Park, eighth of a mile from home. Smart Lad with the lead, and down the lane they come. Smart Lad has the lead. Set to shine, angles out for the drive. It's Bold Arch in third. Deep stretch. Smart Lad set to shine with one last push on the outside. But Smart Lad will win it. Set to shine second, Bulldogs third, Bell Kara Park fourth. There they go. Azov C, my man Stan, and Showman from along the inside. These three vie for the early lead. It's two and a half lengths back to English Bay Teddy on the outside, followed by Union Man and Barbary Bendit. As they go to the clubhouse turn, my man Stan now comes away with the lead. Azov C up on the outside. Showman at the rail is third, Union Man fourth. English Bay Teddy is fifth, about four off the lead. Trailer. Barbary Bandit. Past the half mile marker they go. 22 and 3 was the opening quarter. And as they head down the back stretch, my man Stan and Azov C heads apart. English Bay Teddy driving it up three wide. In between them, Union Man Showman's at the rail and Barbary Bandit with about eight to make up. As they head into the far turn, the half 46 and 2. Azov C on the outside. At the rail, my man Stan. Now it's English Bay Teddy creeping closer in third. Five lengths back, Showman, Barbary Bandit, Union Man, eighth of a mile from home. From the outside, it's now A's off C with a short lead. But my man Stan is game at the rail. English Bay Teddy third, A's off C. My man Stan on the inside, A's off C to prevail. It'll be my man Stan second. English Bay Teddy third, Barbary Bandit fourth. There they go. Queen of Attitude off a step slow. It is Koala, straight and true, looking for the early lead. Alobra pressing up on the inside. It is nine o'clock, Caesar who gets away in third. Followed by at the rail, Bellaru on the outside, lasting light. Two and a half lengths back to Queen of Attitude. She's already about seven off the lead. Into the clubhouse turn they go, and Alobra shows the way. Now by a tight length, 
up on the outside, Koala second by Alec, down on the inside, nine o'clock, Caesar, last thing light. Then we have Bellaru, and on the outside is Queen of Attitude. Opening quarter, 22 and four. They're midway on the back stretch and three furlongs to run. And from the outside, Koala takes a short lead. Alobra trying to stay with her. Nine o'clock, Caesar, last thing light. Queen of Attitude, she'll need a way through. And at the rail is Bellaru, less than a quarter mile from home. Half, 46 and one, and Koala gets away from them. Opens up by three. On the inside, it's Alobra, nine o'clock, Caesar. Circling up on the outside, now last thing light, Queen of Attitude last, and down the lane they come. Koala has snuck away, and Koala opens up. Koala, Bellaru now second. It is Koala to win it, Bellaru second, Queen of Attitude third, last thing light fourth. There they go. From the center, better with time on the early lead, little sister Lee. And moving up on the outside, she's on fire. At the rail is drill, baby, drill. Then we have best one yet, and striking value. Under the line, trying to be geared down, is little sister Lee with a short lead. Up on the outside, better with time. She's on fire, and drill, baby, drill. Into the clubhouse turn they go. Opening quarter was 23 and one as they run past the half mile marker. It is Little Sister Lee to the back stretch with a length lead. Better with time, sits in second. She's on fires on the outside in third. Drill, baby, drill at the rail. Followed by striking value. And as they go to the turn, best one yet. As they run past the 5 16 a half, 47 and four. Little Sister Lee trying to take them all the way. Then it's better with time in second. On the outside, she's on fire. Drill, baby, drill, looking for a way through, followed by striking value, and best one yet. Eighth of a mile from home, they're stacked up. Drill, baby, drill with a short lead. She's on fire, far outside. Little Sister Lee's at the rail, striking value, trying to pull the upset. But it's drill, baby, drill. Drill, baby, drill, will win it. Striking value second, I believe it's she's on fire third over her best one yet fourth. post there they go stop shopping Shelley from between runners Texas humor far outside now here comes star finality and down towards the inside is Rose of Texas but as they go under the line emerging from the pack here's the sky is the limit with the lead Gwen gets away in second on the outside star finality in third then is Texas humor in fourth Link for the back at the rail is Perfect Penny. On the outside now is Rose of Texas. Stop Shopping Shelley is in seventh. Tra trailing horse, Little Miss Intaglio. Opening quarter, 22 and two. Midway on the back stretch. 
And the sky is the limit, shows the way now by a little over a length with Gwen chasing in second. There's a gap of three in between runners is star finality at the rail. We have perfect penny. Far outside now, Texas Humor. They're midway on the turn, the half, 45 and four. The sky is the limit has run away by three. As they turn for home, the sky is the limit leads it by three. Perfect penny now in second. Far outside, Texas Humor third, and down the lane they come. It is the sky is the limit, but competition from Texas Humor over the top. Texas Humor will win it. Perfect penny second, the sky is the limit third. Then we have Rose of Texas and Gwen.
And a pleasant good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Sunday afternoon edition of Hastings Racing Live, presented by BC Racebook. Track announcer Dan Jukic being joined as usual by our paddock host and handicapper Mike Heads. Mr. Pick Four here as we're going to preview all seven races on today's card. Hopefully get you headed in the right direction. No clouds today. Beautiful nope, sunny beauty. day. A lot warmer today. A uh, little breeze kicking up, but uh, yeah, nice ideal conditions. A little warmer, as you mentioned, than yesterday. A lot warmer than yesterday. Actually, we had some, a little bit of drizzle yesterday around the first race. Right. But uh, no rain in the forecast today. Seven races, no stakes race. We'll have a pile of those next week. We got two of them on Saturday, which is Canada Day, and two on Sunday. Yep, we got four stakes races next weekend. Uh, one for each of the, obviously all of the divisions: the three-year-old fillies, three-year-old colts, older mares, older boys, and uh, those will be the, well, the older mares and older boys will be on Canada Day, and then the three-year-old and three-year-old fillies will be on the Sunday, July the second. They will be. Noms are out, and the seven in the older fillies and mares, nine in the boys. Yeah. And on the Sunday side, 11 in the three-year-old boys and the Chris Loseth and nine in the girls. Yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, the three-year-olds got quite a few, eh? 11 of them in the, you know, as they make their trek towards the BC Derby or right. to the Derby Series, because there is a, a Derby Series this year that begins on uh, uh, BC Cup BC Day. Cup, our <laughs> BC Cup Day, uh, of course, uh, in Manitoba uh, with the Manitoba Derby. And then three weeks later, they get the Canadian Derby. And then three weeks after that would be the BC Derby. So there's a bonus if you win all three. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so a lot of interest getting, uh, it's getting interesting for the three-year-olds is now they start to stretch. These are all model 16th, too. Right. No more uh, six and a halfs uh, for the older horses. So uh, all these stakes are going long. They certainly are. All right, we'll start with the opener on today's card, a field of five. They're going to go six and a half. First half of the double exactor and triactor wagering. They are maidens in for a tag anywhere from seven thousand yeah, they're all up over to the place, ten thousand dollars. Yeah, they're all over the place. I'm gonna head to the four Texas Legis Legacy seven for eight in the money. Just no win yet. Yeah, but hey, drill baby. There's always hope. You got drill baby drill that uh, You did get her home. Got her yeah. got well, it was just one of those days he was gonna win. But uh yeah, this race is you know, not a whole lot to hang your hat on in here, but I'm going to take a shot on the five penalty to Rangers. This is the one run last year. That was for 16. Wasn't disgraced in that race. Uh, uh, the horse has been working well this spring uh, right. for Keith Peterson. Uh, four good five-eighths of a mile works. Not facing a tough group. Why not try this one? And right. that's what I'm going to do. Try penalty to Rangers. Over the one horse lent me 20, who was formerly in the Keith Peterson barn, and I put the four Texas Legacy in for third. The one and four to me are obviously pretty similar. There wasn't much between them last time, but uh, I thought Penalty Ranger was, was something was new, something interesting and fresh, and so I'm going to try this one. And we should let everyone know too that Jockey Amadeo Perez is not riding today, nope. as he is at Emerald Downs in Auburn, Washington, riding. Akatiana Arrival. Akatiana Arrival, or whatever you want to say it. Yeah, for Peter Redekop and the wife, Barb Heads. Yeah, uh, the horse is uh, 12 to 1 in the morning line in the Budweiser Stakes today, but Amadeo, you know, it's chosen to ride ride that one and uh, given up his calls today. I know a lot of the riders will be delighted to see him <laughs> out of the jocks room. And uh, there's no more six win days or no. three win days. No. They got a chance to win the seven races today, but uh, yeah, you're right. Amadeo away for the day, but uh, he's still got a good shot later on. All right, and the opener, Mike's heading to the five. Penalty to Rangers. I'm going to head to the four, Texas Legacy. On to race two now. Older runners are going to go six and a half. Exactor, try. Dollar pick five. No carryover. Should note that number four, Wise Market, is a gelding. I'm not sure when that happened, but he is now yeah, listed either. as a gelding. I'm going to head to the five driller in here, veteran campaigner, sitting with seven wins, 15 seconds, though. He certainly loves to run second. Yes, he does. And uh, just a pretty cool horse, though, driller. Uh, I went to the four Wise Market. I know he's up in class, but he's one, one in class is nothing. Uh, just get some of these old horses in form. They're going to win for four. Right. They're going to win for 6250 as well. And Wise Market was very good in winning last time. He easily bested. Pretty nice horse in Quagmire. He's pretty, and Aditya. Those are two nice $4,000 claimers that he, that he made it look pretty easy. So I'm going to try a Wise Market to, to win it over Baby Grand. Those are your two speed horses in the race, I think. And uh, I just think four over three. And I put the, the one horse foot soldier in for third, who likely will take the po pocket the box seat in behind the leaders. This baby ground probably goes and gets the lead. Right. The four gets to gallop off on the outside, gets that perfect two-wide trip like he did last time when he did win. And 
I, I just think that's the way it's going to run, and uh, Foot Soldier will be uh, running on well for third. All right. Race two, Mike's heading to the four. Wise Market, the veteran campaigner. I'm going to head to another veteran campaigner, the five, Driller. On to race three now, Exactor Tri, pick three wagering, field of five, a mile and a sixteenth. And uh, they're in for $4,000. Where'd you go? I like Kalamazoo's quite a bit in here. I right. think the stretch out will be good. His best races are in a mile and the 16th. And uh, he's got some speed. Uh, I was between him and Patty DiUro, but I thought Kalamazoo's, that fourth behind Foot Soldier and Offler and Racing River was pretty good. And he just got a little too far out of it. But going long, he generally gets in good position. And I think this horse is live in here at, at the right price. I think right. he'll be a better price than Patty DiUro. And... I tried him to defeat. I went 3-5, and I put the one-horse Gorky Park, who, well, he's running well, but he just seems to need a pace scenario in front of him. He's going to need some pace help to make him a winner. May not get it. Maybe it will happen. I don't know. Maybe the 3-4-5 go out there and maybe, you know, do some tussling early, but that would help Gorky Park's chances. Right. But uh, his last, off his last race, you know, obviously, you know, you have to prefer Patty Dior over him, but, you know, he can improve. But uh, I went 3-5-1. and one. All right, race three, Mike's heading to the three, Kalamazoo. I'm going to head to the five, and Patty Dioro for our good friend Carl Lawson and Gabriel Mathuzic. Out of the fourth race now, field of six, six and a half, Exactor Tri Superfecta, $10,000 guaranteed pick four. Starts right here. Where'd you go? Well, I like the one area. I don't love anyone in here. I want Ari Kara, Anami, and, and another Sunny Day, but I think they're all interchangeable, the one, three, and all six. Three, then. And, uh, you know, I hate leaving out Candy Katie, but... Uh, uh, Eric Kara was, you know, had to battle on the head end last time. You know, Pineapple Tidbits came back to run decent yesterday. And, uh, you know, this, this horse really doesn't like getting pace pressure. And I just think the horse is not going to get pace pressure today. And I think Eric Kara is going to have a good shot to win. So I'm going to try her to win it. Anami was very impressive sitting the trip in behind the leaders under Amadeo. Gets Kamel Santo, who seems to be uh, picking up the spoils uh, from <laughs> Perez, which is nice. And But Anami will get a good trip, and he's sharp with... You know, a nice win last time. Up in and, class. And the six, and uh, yeah, and the six, another sunny day. Uh, just needs to work on a trip. Going to try her in blinkers today. She hasn't had blinkers on in some time, but uh, perhaps she, they figure she's losing uh, interest or focus uh, in races, and so they're going to try and slap a set of blinkers on her. But she has been running against tougher mares, and last time the drop, uh, she ran good in that race. I know she was only half a length ahead of Eric Kara, right. but I thought Eric Kara had to do a lot of heavy lifting in that race, as did another sunny day. As I said, the one, three, and six for me are inseparable. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't love I, one at all. This is a race I'm going to have three or four. We're inside outside. Mike's heading to the one, Eric Kara. I'm going to head to the six. Another sunny day for the hot Dino Condolinius barn. On to race five, field of six, a mile and a sixteenth. Exactor Tri Superfecta. Pick three wagering, it's a dollar pick three, and the condition of this one should read straight non-three winners. Claiming price anywhere from eight to ten, one guy gets to get waived. Mm -hmm. That's your, probably uh, the one to beat, <laughs> is Ehrlich. Uh, he's been working lights out. No, nah, he's a nice horse, and uh, he's he's got to go a mile and a sixteenth first start off the bench, but that's okay. Robbie's, I've seen him in the mornings, he's doing good, this horse, and uh, he's probably your best key on the program in your pick fives or pick fours. Like he is uh, your most likely winner of the afternoon. So I'm going to go Ehrlich as the best bet of the day. The three-horse Trapolis had a tough trip last time. I think he'll be better. He had to sit wide on a slow pace last time. Right. Uh, the, pa the pace will likely be a little quicker, but not flying. As Sloop John B. They were like slow dawdling last time with Broken Broken. Yeah, but Broken Broken's a pretty nice horse and ended up outrunning Sloop John B., who did run second. But six for me is uh, quite a bit the best. I put the three and five in behind. That's kind of the way I saw it. It's uh, Ehrlich for me as a key. Well, a slow fraction shouldn't have taken too much out of Sloop John B. as he is back in eight days. Yeah, that's okay. No, the, it was a gallop for him. 25-3, yes, 50 and 4 I know, fifths, I know. 115, I mean, almost 116. It was a, a, a lope and really just ran a quarter of a mile and uh, just got out sprinted to the wire by Broken Broken, but it was easily second in that race. Uh -huh. But definitely worth following in here. If Ehrlich doesn't run his A race, Luke John B is really live. All right, race five. We agree on the six. Ehrlich on to the sixth race now. Field of six to go a mile and a sixteenth. First half of the leadable exactor. Try and superfecta wagering. 20 down to 16,000 on the claiming. Where'd you go? This is a, this is a I got all, bag all in this race. I know we can't do all in, you know, in our 
the, the pick four we that, that we present. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if we can put six squares no, on No, just there. put all. All, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because uh, this race is an all one. Uh, shotgun rider can win under the right conditions. He just missed a stay fantastic who can also win. Right. Uh, my college fund, he's obviously at a, at a, at a disadvantage coming from making his first start of the year and all these other horses have raced but, but he's, he's been a five training time well. winner out of 11 starts at today's distance no no he loves to run yep. he's a road horse yeah just jimmy is uh in a better you know nicer spot he hooked into a very good set to shine last time and he's been working well gets in light with fraser abley fort langley's always eligible on on the day uh, going this distance at this level and family biz is you know he ran good against slow fractions last I time know. and only got beat a length behind stay fantastic and shotgun rider there is contention top to bottom. I want one, two, six, but like as I said off the top, I'm you know I'm playing the whole. If you want it all, you're playing it all. I'm playing it all. My ticket's it's the all button in this race. All right, race six. Mike's heading to the one shotgun rider. I'm going to head to the two. Stay fantastic. Gone to the seventh and final event. They are going to go six and a half furlongs. It's a field of eight. Exactor try superfecta and twenty cents super high five in here. Where'd you go to close out the card? I look to remember the Alamo. I'm just mm. not sure what to do with him. I went to Celerone. So did I. Remember the Alamo has, his, he's not reliable. And, and, and he's, you know, the minute you leave him out, though, he'll come up he'll, and bite, bite you and wire the field. Of course. Like, he looked so good two starts back in, in running second that day behind Barney Google. And last time he was 23-47 and he shucked it in the lane and finished well back. But, you know, he's got to be better. But he's, he still must have him on the ticket. Setabello is my next horse. But I definitely right. like Cillerone. Cillerone's the horse to beat. This right. horse uh, had really did well considering the pace scenario was against him. But uh, Setabello was interesting too. Uh, uh, we should tell you that Chris Mandine was injured in a morning accident last week. And uh, that's why he's not riding. And Curry Powell will be aboard uh, Setabello. But uh, that horse was impressive in his second run here at Hastings after campaigning in Woodbine last year. Right. Well, this horse can win. Uh, why can't he win a non-two right back? I thought the race was was pretty live, and I, I thought he, you know, he beat some pretty good horses. Milo's command and something elusive has come back to run second out of that race. So I, th I thought, but Silver owns the horse. I went four, five, and three. Cillerone definitely on top. Well, they always say that the uh, toughest race is the one you come off your maiden. Yeah. And uh, I, for a long shot, I don't mind the eight. There goes my hero. Decent effort last time in his first time against winners. No, it ran well. That uh, does lose Morales, but yeah. uh, picks up Antonio Reyes. has been riding well for Steve Henson. That's right. Uh, I think he win one this weekend for him and one last weekend. Uh, yeah, he's doing well for Steve. The Reyes-Henson combo is pretty, pretty live. But yeah, this horse, if it can overcome the outside post and not get into a duel with, remember the Alamo, and then right. the horse is of course, in with a chance. There's no sure thing in here. I mean, I'm taking Cellar Rome. You know, that's, but that's telling after you that. that it, it, it's kind of, uh, it's Setabello, remember the Alamo, th there goes my hero, Atomic Haze. They're all the same. Like, right. they're all a length apart. I mean, it's just whoever gets a little better trip will finish in front of the other. But Cellar Rome looks pretty good today. All right, seventh and final event. We agree on the four Cillerone. That'll wrap up the Sunday afternoon edition of Hastings Racing Live, presented by BC Racebook. Don't forget, live racing does continue next weekend, yep. Saturday Steak and Sunday. Days. Steak Day, Canada Day, lots of activities, activities going on. Check your program. We're going to have a best dress contest, twenty thousand dollar guaranteed pick four, as well as Indigenous Chiefs on site birthday cake and Canada themed giveaways. Lots of food trucks. So come on out. Yeah, Canada Day is always a great yes, day here at the track. I mean, you got your days, BC Derby Day, uh, BC, BC Cup, Cup Day, uh, and of course Canada Day. Right. And they, they are the signature days that you want to be here. There's lots going on. It's a great atmosphere, generally packed here, and uh, it's just a really good ambiance or whatever the word you want to use. It's really a, it's a fun afternoon. Fun, it, it is a fun atmosphere, and uh, you generally get nice horses, and you're getting nice horses next Saturday and Sunday. You get four stakes races over the next weekend. All right, as we leave you, here's a complete look at our selections for the Sunday card. Till next week, good luck, everyone. Have a good day.
Field of Nine set on the way in the CC Derby. And the God with the Canadian Derby. Great Rods will take the Manitoba Derby. And Walcott God takes the lead with great escape.
Good afternoon everyone and welcome to Hastings. Track condition at present listed as track pass. Special welcome to everyone joining us for our Sunday card. Now please turn to your official programs for this afternoon's corrections and changes. In the first race, number one, Lent Me 20 is three pounds over. Number five, penalty to Rangers, three pounds over. In the second, Number four, Wise Market, should be listed as a gelding. In the third, number one, Gorky Park, adds blinkers. Blinkers on for the one, Gorky Park. In the fourth, this race kicks off our 20 cent. Guaranteed $10,000 pick four. There are no changes. In the fifth, please note the condition should read a non-winners of three. Race five is a straight non-winners of three. Number one, IBC and you is three pounds over. Race six, no changes. Race seven, number four, Cillerone is three pounds over. Number eight, there goes my hero, five pounds over. Those are all the changes and corrections to the present time. At this time, Hastings would like to welcome our Sunday groups, and they include the Kirk McLean and Sean Lanigan's birthday party group, Catherine Olson birthday party, 50th birthday greetings to Steve Tremblay. Special welcome on the retirement party to Pete Magligers. Birthday greetings go out to Michelle Jimenez. The Ian Newman party. And on their community day, the Fire Hall Arts Center. Don't forget that live racing does resume next weekend. Saturday, of course, is Canada Day. Come and join us as we'll have on hand with us Indigenous Chiefs, birthday cake and Canada themed giveaways, food trucks, Best Dress Contest, as well as live singers and Aboriginal dancers throughout the day. That's this coming Saturday, Canada Day, first race, 2 p.m. Thank you for your attention and good luck.
Well, a pleasant good afternoon to everyone and welcome to the paddock here at Hastings. Beautiful Sunday afternoon here in the greater Vancouver area. Little breeze kicking up, temperatures in the low 20s, just ideal conditions for our seven race program today. Of course, we do have a fast racing surface. I'm your paddock host, Mike Heads. Uh, hopefully going to get you uh, making some winning decisions as you head up to the windows. At least helps you out a little. Got the pick five today. It starts in race number two. Of course, the pick four is guaranteed a ten grand payout pool and starts in race number four. Those of you that like the multi-leg wagers, which are always your best investment, I think. For the money you got to spend, uh, you can really... Multiply your money if you get lucky and get uh, the right numbers coming in. We've got to feel the five to kick off your early double. We also have exact uh, triactor wagering for you here on the first, as well as when play show. I always like to mention that. that you can, if you're not betting the exotics, you can always just simplify it, win, place, and show. we got that on every race today. They're eight thousand dollar Philly Mare Maidens going six and a half furlongs. We're looking at the one that's lent me twenty. First up run for the Dreamtime Stable and trainer Greg Benin shelled out eight or ten grand for this one. Out of a third place run behind nine o'clock Caesar and uh, Texas Legacy. Didn't do anything right that day. Didn't do anything wrong. Just kind of an even effort. Not facing the toughest of crews, though. Comes right back at the same level that they claimed him for, or her for. Jose Gomez will be the new pilot. He's the barn rider for Greg Benin. Co-favorite at 8-5. to five. That's the one lent me 20. Probably going to show some speed from down on the inside. There isn't much speed in the race. Must probably best advised to try and make the lead in here. Once again, blinkers. Bred by our buddy Rick Camps up in Princeton. Of course, uh, runs Brian Anderson's farm up in Princeton, B.C. Of course, former successful trainer here at Hastings, Rick Camps. Won a lot of races here. A lot of stakes races for a lot of different owners, in particular the Felicellas and Corrigans. Oh, he trained for a lot of people. Anyway, uh, yep, Rick the Breeder on this one. And I'll be up there in Princeton watching, cheering for Lent Me 20. Got a good shot of winning today. Two to one, second choice. There's the one. Number two will be Stolo Spirit for the LNS Farms. Distant fourth, exiting that same 9 o'clock Caesar uh, Texas Legacy Lent Me 20 race. Wasn't all that sharp away from the gate. He just She's got to get a little better out of there. Giving herself a lot to do in her races. She's just getting a little too far back. It doesn't possess the needed late kick to get in play late. Ridge Balgoba on a once again ride. 16 to 1. For the daughter of Lent. Three Lents in here. Got the 1, 2, and 3 are all by Lent. 16, big price on Stolo Spirit. Number three is Sweet as Honey for John's dad, Mel. Showed decent speed, sitting just off of 9 o'clock Caesar last time, but did not run on. She was on the class drop that day. She was running for 16, cut her price in half, in for the 8, but results were kind of the same. Obviously, she needs to get better. I don't think there's any secrets there. Currently 14 to 1 on Sweet as Honey. Number 4 will be Texas Legacy. She's live in here. She's a even money favorite. Distant second to 9 o'clock Caesar last time, but ran on well. She's, she's got three seconds, four thirds from eight trips to the post. She's going to break through with a win one day. Fraser Abley rides. 
definitely your horse to beat here. That's the four, Texas Legacy. I landed on the five. Penalty to the Rangers. Kind of like the five in here. Just going to take a shot. Just the one run last year. Like the work tab. A lot of these horses have had a lot of chances, so I'm going to try penalty the Rangers. Only had one chance. Currently 5-2 to two on penalty the Rangers. And that's, as I said, that's what I'm going to try and uh, kick off our Sunday program with. I did go 5-1-4. and four. That's kind of the way I see it here in our opener. you got 10 minutes to post to figure it out. Thanks, everyone, for coming out today. It's going to be a great afternoon. Good field size today. A little better field size today. No four-horse fields, which is always nice. Good luck here in the opener. Let's send it up to Dan for the post braider race number one. Horses on the track at Hastings for the open air. It's a field of five to go six and one half furlongs. First half of the daily double exactor and triactor wagering. Post time is nine minutes away. Here's the field, number one, Lent Me 20. By the Dreamtime Stable, the rider is Jose Gomez. Number two, Stolo Spirit. By the LNS Farms Limited, the rider Ridge Balgobin. Number three, Sweet as Honey. By Len Howling and Mel Snow, the rider is Brian Abudramsing. Four, Texas Legacy. By Daryl Hammond, Christy Hammond, John Snow, and Bill Doby, Apprentice Fraser. Ailbly rides. And number five, penalty to Rangers, owned by John Anderson and Catherine Anderson. Antonio Reyes up. Eight minutes to post time. All right, let's kick off our Sunday card and go down to the paddock and Bailey Williams. Thank you, Dan. We are seven minutes away from the opener here on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. The three horses in my top three are currently all the favorites on the tow board. Number four, six to five, and that is Texas Legacy. Just had the runner-up effort last time to to nine o'clock Caesar who is just much the best that day she has three starts on the season two seconds and a third looking to get that maiden victory here today I do think if she can get a little bit of a stocking trip she will be able to get that maiden win number one let me 20 I'm really happy to see the way the horse is performing right now on post parade jogged by nicely they've had a little bit of trouble with her in the mornings but she seems very composed here come race time and rounding out my top three is the five penalty to Rangers a little bit of a question mark here we haven't seen her at the races since her one and only start back in August of last year. She was vanned off after that trip. However, she's had great works underneath her coming into this race. A nice final prep back on June 17th in a minute and four fifths. So I do think she's one to definitely consider. I think she'll need this race for sure. However, look for her in the future. I went 4-1-5 here in the opener. You got six minutes to get your wagers in. Get them in early and best of luck.
At this time, just a reminder to our on-track guests that today is the Fire Hall Arts Center Community Day here at Hastings. Watch for the Fire Hall Arts Center volunteers as they are selling 50-50 tickets. Key West Ford reminds you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings.
Under a minute to post time at Hastings, less than a minute. The horses are approaching the starting gate. Loading it now for the opener at Hastings. Sweet as honey, the first one up. Next one up, Texas Legacy. Gate two for Stolo Spirit. Texas Legacy now goes in, two left to load, penalty to Rangers, and Lent, me 20. Five in, uh, they're at the post. There they go. Texas Legacy pops out of there for an early lead. Penalty to Rangers, though, takes away the lead. Lent, me 20 gets away in third. It's Sweet as Honey in fourth. Stolo Spirit is the early trailer. Under the line, it is penalty to Rangers. Out there on a loose two and a half length lead. Down on the inside is Texas Legacy. Up on the outside now is Let Me 20. It's about five lengths back to Sweet as Honey and four to Stolo Spirit. As they run past a half mile marker, the opening quarter in 22 and four. To the back stretch they go. Penalty to Rangers leads it now by just over a length. Battling for second there is Texas Legacy on the inside and Let Me 20 on the outside. Six lengths for the back, Sweet as Honey, and five to Stolo Spirit. As they run to the quarter mile pole, the half up 47 and two, and penalty to Rangers continues to lead it. Texas Legacy trying to give it another shot. It's two lengths back to Let Me 20, three for the back, Sweet as Honey, and Stolo Spirit. Eighth of a mile from home, and down the lane they come. It is penalty to Rangers, now clear by three. Texas Legacy trying to hold second, but penalty to Rangers will win it. Texas Legacy holds on for second. Let me 23rd, sweet as honey and stolo spirit.
on the board. The unofficial winner, number five, penalty to Rangers. Number four, Texas Legacy, second. One, Lent Me 20 is third, and three, Sweet as Honey, fourth. Five, four, one, three, unofficial. The result has been declared official. The two dollar exactor was fourteen sixty, two dollar try fifteen forty. Into the winner's enclosure, the winner, the opener, number five, penalty to Rangers. Owned by John Anderson and Catherine Anderson. Trained by Keith Peterson. Winning riders, Antonio Reyes. Penalty to Rangers is a three-year-old filly by Storm Victory out of Swap a Lady. Bred in BC by Helen Climbs. Final running time for the six and one half furlongs, 118 and 49 one hundredths. 
In the second, number four, Wise Market should be listed as a gelding. And later on on today's card in the sixth race. Number four, Just Jimmy. Please delete assistant trainer Nicole Rycroft.
Okay, we're back here in the paddock. Time for race number two here at Hastings. Got to feel the five. 6250 claimers. They're going to sprint six and a half furlongs. We have exact attractor. And your pick five starts here. You pick five players. You got to get figuring it out now. You got 15 minutes to post. No carryover today. Well, congratulations to John and Catherine Anderson's penalty and Rangers and trainer Keith Peterson and rider Antonio Reyes's penalty to Rangers. Breaks on top. Never challenged. Always looked like a winner pretty much the entire trip. Never looked like she was going to lose. But a uh, big run for her off the layoff. And she wins race number one. Here's the one. This is Foot Soldier, currently the even money favorite. Two wins and a narrow loss this year in his three starts. Did get claimed, makes his first start for the Hammer Racing Stable and trainer Robbie Henson. Likely going to sit just a little off the pace. I think Baby Grand, but you never know. Baby Grand has some speed, and Wise Market has some speed, and maybe might take the box seat in behind them. This horse has run some good races from that spot. Seems to be better when they rate him. Anytime he used to go to the front, he used to get a little leg weary in the stretch, so they're getting him to relax early, and he's finishing better, and he's had a great season. Already earned 20 grand, this foot soldier. Didn't win a race last year and earning 18,000, but he's already got 20 grand in the bank in the first couple of months of the season. That's pretty nice. Silvino back aboard. There's your favorite and the horse to beat. Number two will be Juvie 2. He's had a good season so far, a win in the third. Followed up by that fourth place uh, run last time. Just everything was against him. The pace was terribly slow. Was last early. The pace is going not going to be blazing in here, but I don't think it's going to be as slow as it was last time. So he's definitely in with a better chance. Five to two right now. A little pretty low number on Juvie too. But he's beaten Foot Soldier this this year. So he is the logical horse to maybe do it again. The trip will determine everything with him. He He's probably going to be last early. He's going to be saving ground. And it's just a matter of how the field bunches up on, on at the eighth pole or on the final turn, whether he has to go four wide and whether he can weave his way through the field, which would make things easier. But we'll see how it all plays out. Five to two, though, on a very live Juvie 2. Three is Baby Grand. Likely the speed of the race. Good sprint run, two back. Running second to Slews the Boss. Battled on a slow pace that day, but he sprinted home with everyone. Just got beat, though, by uh, Slews the Boss, but did save second ahead of the five horse driller that day. They routed him last week. He ran good. They didn't go fast early, but once again, he's battling all the way. Just got photoed out of third by Goodbye Putin, who was a winner this year. That was a tough 62. This is an easier 62, but it's back at six and a half furlongs. And also, he's back in eight days. It's, but we'll see. Uh, he is the speed. I think Baby Grant is the, the one to come and catch. I've got him in for second, but could certainly see him winning. He's a nice price at 7-1. to one. Number four will be Wise Market. He's my top pick in here. KG Veterans earned over a quarter million dollars in his life. He was an okay third, first time out behind Goodbye Putin and Finding Ways. Dropped in for four, got a perfect trip that day, and he won in a good time. I think he's going to get a perfect trip again. And it's not like the 6250 claimers are not are beyond him. He can beat them. You see Camille Santo getting a leg up by Mark Cloutier, who's Barnes heating up. 
Had another winner yesterday with Smart Lad. Looking pretty live here with Wise Market. Rounding out the field will be the uh, Lone Gray, number five, Driller. Close third behind Slews the Boss and Baby Grand last time. He's interesting. But once again, the trip will dictate everything. I don't know what kind of trip he's going to get from the outside. I know you're not going to get a brutal trip, but if the pace is slow, he could be three wide the whole race, and that's not going to help his chances. If they stretch out a bit, he might be able to tuck in. If they go a little quicker, I mean, and stretch the field stretches out, then he can slide in from his outside post and maybe get near the rail and save some ground and perhaps uh, win the money. T I know Dan and Lisa both like... Uh, Driller today. I'm going to the four wise market. Another veteran. Good luck here in race number two. The start of the pick five. The horses on the track at Hastings, race number two, field of five. They're going to go six and one half furlongs. Exactor, Triactor, and one dollar pick five wagering. There is no carryover. Post time in nine minutes. Please note number four, Wise Market, should be listed as a gelding. Here's the field number one foot soldier owned by the Hammer Racing Stable. The rider is Silvino Morales. Number two, Juvie Two owned by High Stakes Thoroughbreds and John Snow. The rider is Apprentice Fraser Abley. Number three, Baby Grand owned by the Minilu Stables and Dave Milburn with Leary Cicheran. Four is Wise Market owned by BFA Holdings, Kemal Santo up. And number five is Driller, owned by Don Daynard and Mel Snow. The rider is Brian Budramsing. Seven minutes to post time.
Under three minutes to post time at Hastings, less than three. Key West Ford reminds you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings. Under a minute to post time at Hastings, less than a minute. The horses have reached the starting gate.
Hardigan now for the second at Hastings. Put Soldier goes in to the inside gate. Juvie two. Baby Grand, Wise Market, and Driller. Five in. They're at the post. Maybe Grand not quite set. Maybe Grand once again is backed out. Co choices on the board, foot soldier and wise market. Once again, Baby Grand backs away. Balance of the field is standing well, just waiting on Baby Grand. Baby Grand now set. Five in. They're at the post. There they go. Baby Grand quick at the break and on the early lead. Darting to the inside was Juvie 2 unseating the rider. As they pass by us now it is Baby Grand with a short lead. Foot Soldier down on the inside. On the outside is Wise Market. And now trying to take a hold here is Driller. Into the clubhouse turn they go. And it is with the lead. Into the turn, Baby Grand by a length and a half. The outrider has picked up the horse. The loose horse has been taken in hand by the outrider as they turn for the back stretch. It's Baby Grand leading it over Wise Market, sitting in second. Foot Soldier is third, and Driller is fourth. The opening quarter in 23 and 2. As they head towards the 5 6 deeds marker, Baby Grand continues to lead it. Pressing on the outside is Wise Market. Foot Soldier down towards the inside, and Driller is only two and a half off it. The half, 47 and two. Midway on the final turn, and Baby Grant down on the inside, leading away through his Foot Soldier on the outside, Wise Market and Driller, and down the lane they come. Baby Grant with the lead. Wise Market trying to get to her late. Deep stretch down, Baby Grant. Wise Market, one last surge, but. Baby Grand goes all the way. Wise Market second, Foot Soldier third, Driller fourth. Please note the inquiry sign has been posted by the stewards. They are going to review the start of race two. Unofficial winner number three, Baby Grand. Number four, Wise Market, second. One, Foot Soldier, third. Five, Driller was fourth. Three, four, one, five, unofficial. And bringing back the loose horse in front of the paddock, outrider Katrina Diamond, nice pickup through the backstretch.
And just a note that apprentice Fraser Abley now back in the paddock under his own power. Please note the inquiry sign will be taken off the board. There will be no change. Stewards have ruled that number two, Juvie 2, did receive a fair start, ducked in soon after the start, unseating apprentice Fraser Abley. In the winner's enclosure, the winner of race two, number three, Baby Grand. Owned by the Minerloo Stables and Dave Milburn. Dave Milburn trains, assisted by Lisa Balson, winning rider Leary Cicheran. Baby Grand is a six-year-old gelding by Clubhouse Ride out of Include the Grand, bred in California by the owners, the Minerloo Stables and Dave Milburn. The result is official. Three, four exacta was fifty-eight dollars twenty cents. The try was eighty-one ninety. Daily double five and three forty four twenty. Final running time one eighteen and twelve one hundredths. Race three, number one, Gorky Park adds blinkers, blinkers on for the one, Gorky Park. Post time for race three. Currently sitting on the board 21 minutes away at 3.06.
paddock time now for race number three here at Hastings. $4,000 claimers going a mile on the 16th. Kick off your early pick three on races three, four, and five. We also have Exactor and a Triactor wagering here on the third. A good run from Baby Grand in race number two. Took advantage of the uh, pace scenario. Figured to get the lead. Wise Market figured to sit second. They stayed there the whole race. And paid a nice $58 for a $2 exactor. And congratulations to the Middle Stables. Owner trainer Dave Melbourne and Leary C. Tran. Cleverly rated Baby Grand and got to the wire first in race number two. Here's the one. This is Gorky Park. Not listed in your form, but this horse will race in blinkers today. Blinkers on Gorky Park. Got to find a way to get him a little more interested than he has been. You know, that last race was just an ordinary effort, finishing four and a half lengths behind Patty Duro. I know the connections and the public really thought this horse would run a lot better than that. And maybe the blinkers will be the tonic that he needs to uh, be more of a force today. And to stay closer, because there isn't much speed in here. Speed's done good in the first two races. Penalty to Rangers, wire to wire. Baby Grand, wire to wire. Mind you, the fractions have been quite slow in both those races, so speed should hang on. But uh, Gorky Park, on his best day, one of the best horses in here, or the best horse in the race. Eight-time winner throughout his career. Camille Santo once again will be in the irons for the Win Racing Stables and trainer Larry Grieve. Nine to five. Lots of support for the one, Gorky Park. Number two will be Vancouver's Hunter. He likes the mile and the 16th distance. I think he'll be better today. I don't, think, I don't think he'll be as far out of it. He did lose ground at the break. Well, he was steadied. He had to kind of got squeezed out of there uh, on the first turn. And, uh, of course, he was moved up by a disqualification as Patty Diora was number was taken down that day. But anytime you suffer a severe check like that, it can affect. it's going to affect the outcome. This horse could have lost a shoe. Anything could have happened. It, when you check that severely in that spot he did early in the race. And so there's a multitude of things that could have happened to deter him. from. So expect a better run from Vancouver's Hunter. He's 10-1. to 1. Curry Powell once again for Hall of Famer Harold Barraby. Number three will be Kalamazoo's. I like this one today. I think Kalamazoo's going to run a good one. Closing fourth last time against Foot Soldier. That was going six and a half. He's a big horse. I really like this horse going long. I think he'll be m far better today. Antonio Reyes has been aboard for most of his good performances. He'll either be on the lead or just sitting second. I think he's going to be in a perfect spot. And if he gets that perfect spot, I think he's going to be pretty dangerous. And here he's 3-1. to one. That's the three Kalamazoo's. It's my top pick in here. Four will be You Don't Own Me. The Milburn Middle Stables connection. And Leary uh, trying to strike again here. His best races are going long also. He won't be far away from the pace. He had no chance behind Stiblemate Baby Grand last time. The pace was just brutally slow. He had no position. He, he's, he's got his three sprint runs. He's set up now for a good mile in the 16th race. I think you'll see a better performance from the four You Don't Own Me. And number five will be Patty Dioro. Did run second last time, was disqualified to last for interference on the first turn in that, that race. But uh, still, it was a good effort, regardless. He went in 146 and changed, and usually that's good enough to win at this level. Fraser Abley will ride, so a good break in the weights on uh, Patty Dioro for Carl Lawson and Gabe Mathuzak. I went 3-5-1. I kind of like the 3-5. A good little exactor box, maybe. But 3-5-1 uh, for me here in this afternoon's third.
The horses on the track at Hastings for race number three. Field of five, they're going to go a mile and a sixteenth. Exactor, Triactor, and pick three wagering. Post time is nine minutes away. Today's third race is the Fire Hall Arts Center Community Day here at Hastings. Here's the field number one, Gorky Park, owned by Wynn Racing Stables, the rider, Kamal Santo. Two, Vancouver's Hunter, owned by Mr. and Mrs. Harold Barabee, Curry Powell Rides. Three, Kalamazoo, owned by the Willoway Farm, Antonio Reyes in the saddle. Number four, You Don't Own Me, owned by the Minaloo Stables and Dave Milburn, with Leary Cicheran. And number five, uh, Patty Dioro, owned by Gabriel Methusek, the rider's apprentice, Fraser Abley. Please note number one, Gorky Park is racing with blinkers. Post time in eight minutes. Don't forget with the Fire Hall Arts Center Community Day, they are selling 50-50 tickets. Watch for the volunteers.
Key West Ford reminds you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings. Under a minute to post time at Hastings, less than a minute. Hey, horses are approaching the starting gate.
day, horses have reached the starting gate. Loading it now for the third at Hastings on Fire Hall Arts Center, Community Day at the races. Gorky Park, the first one up, followed by Kalamazoo's, Vancouver's Hunter, Patty Dioro to the outside, You Don't Own Me, last of five. Five in, they're at the post. There they go. Patty Dioro from the outside. Kalamazoo's from between rivals. Now trying to split runners. There goes You Don't Own Me. At the rail is Gorky Park. And Vancouver's Hunter is the early trailer. Rounding the far turn. Kalamazoo's has the lead now by a neck. You Don't Own Me pressing on the outside. Patty Dioro is a bit of a wide trip in third. Gorky Park had to take a hold as he was going to run off on horse's heels. And Vancouver's Hunter, the trailer, opening quarter, 24 and 1. Through the stretch, You Don't Own Me on the outside. Kalamazoo sat the rail. Then they're stacked three across the track. Gorky Park, Vancouver's Hunter, and Patty Dioro. Into the clubhouse turn they go as they go into the turn with Kalamazoo from the rail with the lead still by a neck. You Don't Own Me, second by a length and a half. It's Gorky Park at the rail, third, Patty Dioro wide on the course and in between them Vancouver's Hunter half is 47 and three now three furlongs to run and it is you don't own me on the outside by a head Kalamazoo second by two and a half Gorky Parker's third Patty Dioro fourth trailer Vancouver's Hunter quarter mile from home six furlongs went up and went 12 and three you don't own me now takes the lead and leads it by a little over a leg Kalamazoo, Gorky Park, Patty Dioro, and Vancouver's Hunter. Eighth of a mile from home, and it is You Don't Own Me with the lead. Gorky Park emerges on the outside. Kalamazoo set the rail. New leader now, it's Gorky Park. And Gorky Park goes on to lead it and win it by just under two. You Don't Own Me second, Kalamazoo's third, Patty Dioro, and Vancouver's Hunter. On the board, the unofficial winner of race three, number one, Gorky Park. Number four, You Don't Own Me, second. Three, Kalamazoo was third. Five, Patty Dioro, fourth. One, four, three, five, unofficial.
Into the winner's enclosure, the winner of the third, number one, Gorky Park. He's owned by Win Racing Stables, trained by Larry Grieve, assisted by Ian Jewell, the winning rider, Kamal Santo. Gorky Park is a six-year-old gelding by Twirling Candy. Out of Emotional Storm, Gorky Park, bred in Kentucky by High Five Racing Stables 2, LLC. Today's third race is a community day for the Fire Hall Arts Center. Read about the Fire Hall Arts Center in today's program. Now making a presentation will be Mr. Ryan McCartney as they receive their $5,000 community day's check. The 1 4 exacta was 34.20. 1 4 3 $2 try was 85.80. Final running time 146 and 16. One hundredths. In the fourth race, to kick off our $10,000 guaranteed pick four, owner line on number two, Timely Shrug, should read the Rockfield Farm. Post time for race four, 22 minutes away at 3.39.
We're back here in the paddock. Time for race number four here at Hastings, and this is the start of the $10,000 guaranteed payout pool pick four. And races four through seven. Well, congratulations to the win racing stables. Larry Grieve and Kamal Santo as Gorky Park. Puts the blinkers on. Finally got some racing room. He was stuffed down on the inside the whole race. Finally got out and got up to defeat a very stubborn you don't own me who ran another it was very game looked like Leary and Dave were going to get another one but a good second for you don't own me but Gorky Park gets all the cake in race number three all right here's the one this will be Eric Kara. first run for Robin Sheena Maben look for this one to uh, shoot off to the front play catch me if you can under Ridge Balgobin that's the style of this horse employees and she's done it to modest success 16 starts three wins four seconds and three thirds 10 for 16 in the money it's a pretty nice percentage banking just over 40 g's if she gets pressure that's when she's gets to get whenever she gets intimidated and someone near on the head end is where she sometimes fails but if she can shake loose, and she certainly could in this race, she's definitely faster than anyone. It's just a matter of who else wants to go with her. But mind you, anyone that goes with her usually pays the penalty and, and is out of gas in the lane as well. But uh, Eric Kerr is pretty dangerous at 5-1. to one. I don't think you're going to get 5-1, to one, but right now it, the tote board does indicate 5-1. to one. Probably get closer to 2-1 to one or 3-1 to one on Eric Kerr. Pretty solid at the $4,000 level. Winless this year, but does have a second and a third. Been popular at the claim box. This will be here. She's probably wondering what's going on. This is three consecutive races where she doesn't go back to her own home. Started with Dino and went to Greg Benin's, then uh, went to Rob Mabin's last time. So Change, uh, Changing her address a lot is Eric Kara. Might do it again. We'll see. Number two will be timer sh Timeless Shrug for the Rockfield Farm and trainer Ralph Zaft. Who is the Rockfield Farm? Decent works for her uh, comebacker. Her lone win last year did come going long, but she's got to start somewhere. She's going to start at the uh, six and a half furlong distance. Not surprising she's the biggest price in here. Number three will be Anami. What a ride by Emma Dale last time to win that one. Stole victory from no people that day. Took the blinkers off. Relaxed nicely and behind the speed. Proved to be a winning strategy. That was a non-3-4 though. Is up in class with a non-4-4 now. This is a non-4 lifetime. But she looks good here in the paddock. Camille Santo will be aboard. Currently 5-2 to two on a NAMI. I got her in for third, but can certainly see her winning. Four is Racino. Makes her 2023 debut for the Hastings Racing Club and Pat Jarvis. Obviously some nagging little issues with her, because I know she was good to go, or was in one day about three or four weeks ago, but had to be scratched. And uh, But she'd come back to work very good ten days ago in a minute and three-fifths. But she's on her game. She can beat these horses. We'll see if she is today. She's six to one. Five is Candy Katie. Another one. When she's on her game, she's tough to beat. But uh, each race, the numbers are getting a little lower. I know she had a tough trip last time in a very quick heat. There was one by Koala. Koala came back to win for twelve five yesterday. That was a dirty one to run into uh, for four grand. Antonio Reyes will be aboard. And number six is another sunny day. Your eight to five favorite. Going to put the blinkers on today. Must mean they're gunning her. And that doesn't bode well for Eric Kerr. Or maybe even for another sunny day. We'll see how it plays out. But she, when she sits second, she's generally pretty tough another sunny day. She can outrun uh, Eric Kerr to the wire. But if they duel each other, then that brings in Anami, Candy Katie, and others into the play. All right, I want one, three, and six. Uh, no love, no love for any one particular horse. Like them all equally. It's just not one of those races where I can pinpoint one horse. 
Uh, one, three, six for me. And if I had another one, definitely the five horse candy Katie. Good luck here in the fourth. Horses on the track at Hastings, race number four. Field of six to go six and one half furlongs. Exactor, Triactor, Superfecta, 20 cent pick four wagering. Pick four guaranteed at $10,000. Post time, nine minutes away. Here's the field for the fourth and number one, Ari Kara, owned by Rob and Sheena Maben, the rider, Ridge Balgobin. Two Timeless Shrug, owned by the Rockfield Farm, the rider, Leary Sicheran. Three Anami, owned by the Canmore Farms, Maureen Goss, Adrian Tremblay, Kamal Santo up. Four Racino for the Hastings Racing Club, Kiron Kelawan rides. Five Candy Katie. Owned by the Todd Mountain Thoroughbreds, the riders Antonio Reyes. And number six, Another Sunny Day. Owned by Bob Leffler, Brian Killens, and Gord McCormick. The rider is Silvino Morales. Seven minutes to post time. Pick four time here at Hastings, sponsored by Twinspires.com for Sunday, June 25th. Here's a look at my ticket. I've gone four deep in the opening leg. One, three, five, six with five, six with one, two, six with three, four for nine, sixty. Mike's gone. One, three, six. King off the six. Ehrlich in race five. Then he spread deep. One, two, four, six and three, four, five for seven, twenty. That is the pick four here at Hastings, guaranteed at ten grand, sponsored by Twinspires.com. All right, six minutes to post time for race four and our guaranteed $10,000 pick four. Let's go down to the paddock and Bailey Williams. Thank you, Dan. You got to look there at Dan and Mike's pick four tickets. I agree with their selections as well. One, six, and three. Currently a little bit more of a value play than I thought. Now jumping to seven to two, but is the one Eric Hara. I like the real advantage for this mare today. She's had three starts already this year, making her fourth for her third barn. If she's able to get a little bit of a relaxed opening fraction instead of the 22.45 she has been getting, I think that this is the race she will be able to go from gate to wire. However, my second choice, another sunny day with the blinkers on, will be one likely to try and press that early pace today. Rounding out my top three is the three. We saw the two first races went gate to wire, and we finally saw a little bit of a closing effort there with Gorky Park, which will help my choice in here, and that's a Nami to get a little bit of a better trip. She had a nice stocking trip last time out to get the win. If she's able to lay off those early fractions here today, look for a nice closing effort from here. Kamal Santos will be looking for back-to-back -back wins. I went one six three here to start my pick four. Get your wagers in early. It's guaranteed $10,000 pool, and best of luck.
Key West Ford remind you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings. The horses have reached the starting gate. Loading in now for the fourth at Hastings. Last chance to get involved in that $10,000 guaranteed pick four. First one up will be the rail horse without the rider, Eric Kara. Harry Carrot of the inside gate ridge. Val Govan will reunite inside the gate. Anami, the next one up. Timeless Shrug making her 2023 debut. Next one along will be Ray Sino.
Candy Katie, and another sunny day. Six in, they're at the post. There they go. From the rail, Ari Kara on the early lead, Candy Katie, Anami, and another sunny day, widest of all. As they pass by us now, Ari Kara and another sunny day hookup. Two lengths back is Anami in third, Racinos at the rail. Candy Katie on the outside, timeless shrug, six back in sixth. Into the clubhouse, there they go. Ari Kara from the rail by a head. Pressing on the outside now is another sunny day. They've opened up five on Anami. Candy Katie, Racino, Timeless Shrug, the trailer. As they head down the back stretch, the opening quarter, 22 flat, and it's Airy Kara by a neck. Another sunny day, still second by five and a half. Then Anami in third on the outside, Candy Katie. Racino's at the rail, and Timeless Shrug, half, solid, 45 and two. Midway on the turn, Airy Kara now opens up by two and a half. Another sunny day, Racino closing ground at the rail. Anami and Candy Katie, eighth of a mile from home, and Ari Kara comes home with a six-length lead. Racino, the closest pursuer, Anami is third. Ari Kara by four, and Ari Kara will win it in the clear. Racino second, Anami third, another sunny day, fourth. On the board, the unofficial winner, number one, Ari Kara. Number four, Racino, second. Three, Anami, third. Six, another sunny day, four. One, four, three, six on the board. Into the winner's enclosure, the winner of race four, number one, Ari Kara. Owned by Rob and Sheena Maben. Trained by Rob Maben.
Winning rider is Ridge Balgobin. Harry Kara is a five-year-old mare by Majestic Perfection out of Hidatsa, bred in Kentucky by Brereton Jones. The result is official. The one for exacta was worth $49.50. Two dollar try was one fifty seven twenty. Twenty cent super thirty two dollars and ninety cents. Final running time one eighteen and two one hundredths. There was a claim in that fourth race. Number three, Anami, was claimed by Tanya Lipkovitz, trainer Nicole Rycroft. Race five, please note the header should read a straight non-winners of three. Number one, IBC, and you three pounds over. Post time for the fifth, 22 minutes away at 412.
All right, we're back here in the paddock. Time for race number five here at Hastings. This fifth race does kick off your late pick three on races five, six, and seven. And you also have your exacta, triacta, superfecta opportunities as well as the simpler win place show wagers. Well, a big run from Eric Kara for Robin Sheena Maben. Wow. She uh, took all challenger, took them all on, and just spit them out and just drew off to an easy win under Ridge Balgobin. Congratulations to Robin Sheena, Ridge Balgobin, and Eric Kara. Impressive today winning. Race number four. And here's the Maven connection again with the one IB seeing you. It's a non three for eight grand going a mile on the 16th. Got six of them signed on here. Uh, IB seeing you will definitely love the, the distance change to a mile on the 16th. His two runs sprinting have been very good behind Make It or Break It and I'm a cheat too. But uh, when this horse is going to win a race, I think it's going to be going long. And. Uh, it's just too bad Ehrlich's in here. <laughs> that was the only negative, but uh, he's going to run a good race. He'll be on the board probably. Wouldn't su be surprised at all. He's a good, hard-trying guy that uh, racked up a lot of money. A couple of wins from 26 starts, but he has six seconds and nine-thirds. Nice triactor horse is IBC and you. Number two is debatable for Jim Strachan. He was closing well at the end of that race, finished a half a length behind the one horse I'd be seeing you in that one. There wasn't much between them. And there probably won't be much between them again. He will also like a mile and a sixteenth, but doesn't have a whole lot of speed as you know, uh, the one and two both don't have much speed. And I just don't see much pace in here other than Sloop John B. I bet Ehrlich will be a lot closer today, too. Can't drift way back. Like, you're going a mile and a half. And being off so long, I think he might be a little sharp to Ehrlich. So uh, maybe we'll see a bit of a pace that might help out Debatable. I doubt it. Uh, not that he can't win. It's just that I just don't see the pace scenario being wild like, you know, he would need to make him a winner. Fraser Abley will ride. He'll come running on late, get a piece of it, too. That's the two, Debatable. Number three is Trapolis. He had no shot last time. He was three wide the whole race on a slow pace. They sprinted home. Well, Broken Broken did anyway. But uh, perhaps a better trip today. We'll see for the Diot Racing Stables and train Ra trainer Ryan Diot. Antonio Reyes has been aboard for a uh, win already this year on Trapolis and much easier non 2 4. But. Uh, the mile on the 16th is another one. It's his best distance, even though he has one sprinting. But he's a good road horse. But this race has come up tough with Ehrlich and Sloop John B. in it. We'll see how he fares today. 12-1 to 1 on Trapolis. Four will be 151. Another one where... The majority of his good races have been at a mile and a sixteenth. Makes his third run off the claim for Harold Barraby. Finally gets to stretch out. He doesn't need to drift back that far. He might be a little closer to the pace than you expect. Curry Powell will be aboard. But it all depends on the break. You gotta, you know, fall out of there reasonably well if you're gonna lay third or something in here or second. Horses don't always agree with you. Especially mile the 16th horses. They fall out as they wish. 15 to 1 on 151. 5 will be Sloop John B. Here comes Sloop John B. Pretty nice runner-up effort to Broken Broken. And if anyone is going to upset the current favorite, it will be this guy. He has the speed. He will get the lead. The pace will be slow. Just like his stablemate, Baby Grand, who won earlier today. Larry Seats Rand will be trying to slow her down in here. Five to two on Sloop John B. He is the speed. Speed's done good. 
Yeah, Airy Kara definitely uh, signaled that. Airy Kara, what do we had? Gorky Park's the only horse to come from a little off it, but he was trapped and proved best. But even the pace setter, you don't own me, ran second in that one. Yeah, Speed's doing good today. Mind you, this is the day where the Speed are the better horses too. So, rounding out the field to be number six, it's Ehrlich. Won the marathon series, final leg of the marathon series last year at a mile and three eighths. It's only his second career win, so he's still eligible for this non three. You see his gallop boy, Gabby Asenzio, on the head end. Gabby's a little small because Ehrlich isn't that big. That Ehrlich looks 17 hands right now. Karen Kellowan will ride for Lance Giesbrecht and Gordy Kristoff. Definitely the horse to be. I, I, he was my key today. He's the, he's the best horse in here, I think, uh, significantly. The only one I'm worried about is Sloop John B. He is, his speed makes him dangerous. And if Ehrlich gives him too much respect and does, gets too far back, he may not get him, but Ehrlich is the one to beat. All right, good luck here in race number five. First leg of your early pick three. Enjoy race number five. Hey, horses on the track at Hastings, race number five, field of six to go a mile and a sixteenth. Exactor, Triactor, Superfecta, and pick three wagering. Post time in eight minutes. Once again, this fifth race is a straight non-three event. On parade number one, IBC and you, owned by Robin Sheena Maben, the riders Silvino Morales. Number two, Debatable, owned by Jim Strachan, the riders Apprentice Fraser Abley. Three, Trapolis, owned by Dayot Racing with Antonio Reyes. Four, 151, owned by Mr. and Mrs. Harold Barraby, Curry Powell in the saddle. Five, Sloop John B, owned by the Minnaloo Stables and Dave Milburn with Leary Cicheran aboard. And number six is Ehrlich, owned by Lance Giesbrick and Gordon Kristoff. The rider is Kieran Kellowan. Six minutes to post time. And once again, let's go down to the paddock area. Bailey Williams. Thank you, Dan. Six minutes away from race number five, going a mile and a sixteenth. This is a race where I singled number six, Relic, in my pick for wager. I think that he is definitely the one to beat. Currently on the tote board at four to five, the public agrees. Making his 2023 debut at a mile and a sixteenth, but that doesn't worry me as he has two very solid six furlong works coming into this race. And last year, the further he got running, the better his result was. There w should be a nice pace set by my second choice in here, five to two, and that's Sloop John B. If he can get comfortable on the front end, I think the only one that will be able to run him down is Relic. This <clears throat> horse likes to have a comfortable lead. 
and should be able to get that as there's no other consistent speed in this race. And rounding out my top three is the one I be seeing you. He's been getting involved a lot earlier in his races sprinting this year. If he's able to lay off of the pace a little bit in front of Relic, but off the early pace. He will have a nice shot in here. He's been proving to be a, an off the pace sprinter. We'll see if he can translate and get d running them down late going long. I went 6-5-1 here in race number five. You have five minutes to make your wagers and don't forget there's a late pick three that starts here through race number seven. Best of luck. Key West Ford reminds you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings.
The horses have reached the starting gate. Voting in now for the fifth at Hastings. First one up is IBC and you, followed by Debatable. Trapolis to gate three. 151, gate four. Two left to load, Sloop John B and Ehrlich. One fifty one squeezed in by the assistant starters. Now Sloop John B. And Ehrlich. Ehrlich making his twenty twenty three debut. Goes in, six in, they're at the post. There they go. They've all come away well. 151, Sloop John B. Vi for the early lead. Debatable, tucked in in between runners. Ehrlich's on the outside. Trapolis right there with him. IBC and you is the early trailer. Rounding the far turn and Sloop. John B. shows the way. 151 is second on the outside. At the rail, it's debatable in third. Ehrlich is fourth. Trappel is fifth. Three lengths back. IBC and you. The opening quarter, they dawdled through it in 25 and 1. Through the stretch for the first time. And Sloop John B. shows the way. It's 151 in between runners. Ehrlich now ranging up on the outside. Debatable down towards the inside. Trappel is a little wide. Three lengths for the back is IBC and you. Into the clubhouse turn they go, and it is still Sloop John B. with a short lead. 151 sits second by two with Ehrlich in third. Half mile to run, that half went up in 49 and one. As they head down the back stretch, Sloop John B. shows away by just over a length. 151 tracking in second. Two lengths back, it's Ehrlich in third. Trappel is fourth. IBC and you on the outside of Debatable. Five sixteenths from home, six furlongs in, one fourteen flat, and Sloop John B leads it by a length from the outside. Ehrlich still right there now is one fifty one. Four lengths back, Trapolis, IBC, and you, and debatable as a turn for home, eighth of a mile from home, and it is Sloop John B with the lead. Down the lane they come. Sloop John B. Ehrlich's on the outside. 151 right there. Sloop John B. Ehrlich with one last surge, but it will be Sloop John B. going all the way. Ehrlich will be second. 151 third. Unofficial winner number five, Sloop John B. Six, Ehrlich second. Four, 151 was third. One, IBC and you, four. Five, six, four, one.
into the winner's enclosure, the winner of race five, number five, Sloop John B. He's owned by the Minaloo Stables and Dave Milburn. Dave Milburn trains, assisted by Lisa Balson, winning rider, Leary Cicheran. Sloop John B. is a four-year-old gelding by Clubhouse Ride out of Include the Grand. Bred in California by the owners, the Minaloo Stables and Dave Milburn. The result is official. The five six exacta was eleven dollars and thirty cents. Five six four two dollar try eighty two sixty twenty cent super twenty five dollars fifty nine cents the big three dollar price you need three of three eighteen dollars and forty cents final running time for the mile and the sixteenth one forty six and one one hundred. In the sixth, please de delete Nicole Rycroft as the assistant trainer on the four, just Jimmy. Post time, 22 minutes away at 4.45.
We're back here in the paddock. Time for race number six here at Hastings. Got some $16,000 claimers. Going to go a mile and a, and a 16th. This will be our feature event of the day. No stakes races today, but we got four of them next weekend. July 1st, Canada Day. You got to come out. It's going to be a great card. Two stakes for the uh, older boys uh, and the lieutenant governors that will feature uh, Soaring for the Sun. Uh, it's going to be a good race. Big Union, a roller coaster ride. Uh, the nominations came out today. The Phillies and Mares will be headed by uh, Weeby 3. Who won the last Philly or Mayor's stake race? This will be the Monashi. They're all going to model 16th now, but those two races for the older mares and the older boys, the three and ups, that is, will be on Saturday, Canada Day. Then on Sunday, we got the three year old Phillies and the three year old boys. Uh, they'll be going a mile on the 16th as well. So two more stakes races on Sunday. So four stakes races next weekend. So please do try and be with us, part of those two uh, seven race programs next weekend and lots going on as well there's giveaways uh yeah it's going to be a good it's, uh, giveaways on canada today it's going to be a fantastic afternoon right there's the one that's shotgun rider actually we should backtrack to race number five big run from the mineral stables and dave milburn sloop john b giving the connections dave milburn the owners the mineral stables and Dave uh, and Larry Seacheran doubles on the day. And two wins in a second. They were unlucky not to win another one with uh, You Don't Own Me in race number three. But a big day for the Milburn and Seacheran connections. But Sloop John B just takes advantage of the fractions and holds off an unlucky Ehrlich. And a very good 151 ran awesome in as well under Curry Powell for Harold Barraby. They didn't get beat very far in a big effort. But uh, Sloop John B got the money in race number five. All right, here's the one. This is Shotgun Rider. He just missed to stay fantastic last time. He was on the outside the whole trip. He's going to be on the inside this time. He's, he can dictate things on the rail. He's probably a little faster than stay fantastic. and He may not get the lead, but he'll. I would bet he's going to be ahead of stay fantastic today, which will give him a... A great shot of turning the tables. There was only a, a few inches between them last time. And one is six to one and the other one's nine to five, so that's kind of unfair. They should be far closer in odds. But uh, right now, Shotgun Riders a very generous six to one. Don't mind him at all. I've taken him to win it. Number two will be Stay Fantastic. He took advantage of a, a nice trip last time, had the rail, the easy fractions, just lasted. Pays the penalty for winning. He picks up four pounds, 124 today. So there's, a, there's that four pound weight shift as well between the one and two, as well as the post position flip flop. So that's why I'm going to take the one over the two. But Stay Fantastic, can, of course, can win. But Number three will be my college fund. Makes his first start of the year. Been working well for Michaela Edwards. Owned by her father, uh, Darren, who of course runs under Willow Creek Farms. Just the one win last year. Had a great season in 2021. Ended up running six in the Canadian Derby after winning four times. Last year, running against some tough horses. Had to find the $10,000 ranks to get a win and did it and then ran second in a sales stake. He definitely likes the mile in the 16th. We'll see how he fares today in this 16 up to $20,000 claimer. Just don't see a lot of Maybe there will be some speed. Who knows with just Jimmy in here. Things may liven up a little because he needs it because he's an off-the-pace horse much. My college fund, but he doesn't get super far out of it. Might be a little sharp being his first start of the year as well. Four will be just Jimmy for Don Tedarenko and Craig McPherson. Well beaten to set to shine in a very quick heat. 
but he hasn't been seen for s five weeks now. A couple of good works since then. I know there's been no races filling, and I know uh, get a little frustrated getting horses in, and you know just Jimmy gets in today, which is good. Opted to run him a mile in the 16th. He can sprint. He can run long. He can do anything. Just Jimmy. He's an eat horse. I didn't pick him top three, but I can see him winning. You know, the weight break, 113 with apprentice uh, Fraser Abley. There's just so many ways to go in this race. Really, no one you can really throw out. There's a better look at just Jimmy for you, those of you watching on camera. Five will be Fort Langley. Going to go without the blinkers. Blinkers off today. He was the heavy favorite in that uh, Stay Fantastic Shotgun Rider race. He didn't run to the hype. Perhaps the blinker change will turn things around. On his best day, he definitely beats these horses. We'll see if it's his, his best day. Six will be Family Biz. He wasn't disgraced in that last race. He only got beat a length, and there was no pace on for him at all. Everything went against him that day, and he still ran a close third. He's a nice horse. Camille Santo will re-ride for the Wind Racing Stables. And Larry Grieve, they're looking for a double today. Of course, one with Gorky Park earlier. Their signature purple and yellow colors. 7-2 to two on Family Biz. Current favorites, Fort Langley. It's a good race. Another one. It's a tough handicapping assignment. And you got eight minutes to figure out this puzzle in race six. I went one, two, six. Good luck. Hey, horses on the track at Hastings, race number six. It's a field of six. They're going to go a mile and a sixteenth. First half of the late double exactor, try and superfect the wagering. Post time in seven minutes. On parade number one, Shotgun Rider, owned by Joe Russo and Gloria Russo, Kieran Kelewan riding. Two is Stay Fantastic, owned by the Todd Mountain Thoroughbreds, Antonio Reyes aboard. Three, my college fund, owned by the Willow Creek Farms, the rider, Ridge Balgobin. Number four, Just Jimmy, owned by Don Tedarenko, the rider's apprentice, Fraser Abley. Five, Fort Langley. Owned by George Georgiopoulos and Terry Georgiopoulos, Jose Sanchez aboard. And the six, Family Biz, owned by Win Racing Stables, Kemal Santo riding. Six minutes to post time. All right, time to go down to the paddock. It is 50-50 time. Today on their community day, this will sponsor the Fire Hall Arts Center, down to Bailey. Thank you, Dan, and for everybody here, make sure to pull out those 50-50 tickets. We have Donna here from the Fire Hall Arts Center who's going to draw that lucky winning ticket. So shake up the box and what to... Eyes are closed. <laughs> All right, so it's a blue ticket. So if you have a blue ticket, the winning number is 643. 
six four six zero. Again, it's a blue ticket six four three six four six zero. So if that is your ticket, head on over to the blue tent just outside the winner's enclosure and claim your prize of seven hundred and forty dollars, seven hundred and forty two, the Fire Hall Foundation as well. Thank you so much for joining us. We got our veteran wearing the retro Hastings hat here. So I hope you guys enjoyed your afternoon and thank you for joining us. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your afternoon. And back to you, Dan. Once again, that winning number on a 50-50 draw, 643 worth $740. Please claim your prize immediately at the blue tent outside the winner's enclosure. Key West Ford reminds you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings.
The horses are approaching the starting gate. Starting now for the sixth at Hastings. Shotgun Rider will be the first one up. Next one up is Stay Fantastic. Fort Langley, Gate 5. My College Fund. And the outside gate, Family Biz. Six in. They're at the post. There they go. From between rivals, just Jimmy put on the early lead, but stay fantastic. Drives up the inside. Right there at the rail, Shotgun Rider gets away in third. Followed by my college fund in fourth. Family Biz and Fort Langley is the early trailer. They're on the turn and stay fantastic from the rail. Pressing on the outside, just Jimmy. Length and a half back now, my college fund's got a good spot in third. At the rail, Shotgun Rider is fourth. Then Family Biz and Fort Langley. As they pass by us down for the first time, 24 and two the opening panel. Three across the track, stay fantastic. In between is just Jimmy, and on the outside, my college fun. Down at the fence now, we have Shotgun Rider in fourth, followed by Family Biz and Fort Langley. As they run past the half mile marker, the half went up in 48 and two. From the inside, stay fantastic by a nose. Still right there, just Jimmy. Second by three quarters of a length. Moving up on the outside, my college fund. Perfect spot at the rail for Shotgun Rider if he's good enough. Two and a half lengths back, Family Biz and Fort Langley. Six furlongs, 112 and four. Quarter mile from home. Stay fantastic is game from the fence. Right there though on the outside is just Jimmy. Two and a half lengths back, my college fund. Followed by Shotgun Rider and Family Biz as they turn for home. Just Jimmy with a short lead. Stay Fantastic won't go away. And down the lane they come. It is now Just Jimmy with the lead. Just Jimmy scores by two. Stay Fantastic second. Fort Langley rallies up for third. Family Biz fourth. On the board, the unofficial winner, number four, Just Jimmy. Number two, Stay Fantastic, second. Five, Fort Langley, third. Six, Family Biz, fourth. Four, two, five, six. And just a note to our on-track guests at the 50-50 draw, the winner has claimed their prize.
In the winner's enclosure, the winner of race six, number four, Just Jimmy. He's owned by Don Tedarenko, trained by Craig McPherson. The winning rider's apprentice, Fraser Abley. Just Jimmy is a four-year-old gelding by Jimmy Creed out of Tis a Sweep. Bred in Kentucky by Cove Springs, LLC. The 4-2 exacta was $30.30. 30 425 $2 try was one hundred fifteen seventy. Twenty cent super, twenty-one fifteen. And the pick five pays out five of five. Eight oh seven thirty. Final running time one forty four and forty one hundredths. Seventh race, number four, Cillerone, three pounds over. Owner line on the six, Tuxedo, Ralph Jeziak. Eight, there goes my hero, five pounds over. Post time for the nightcap, 22 minutes away at 5.17. Your attention plays for a late rider change now in race seven.
On number eight, there goes my hero. Make the rider, Kiran Kelawan. Kiran Kelawan rides the eight. There goes my hero. Still remains five pounds over at 120. Okay, we're back here in the paddock. Time for race number seven here at Hastings. Got a field of eight. Non two lifetime. Claiming price 7,500 bucks. Gonna go with six and a half furlongs. Oh, congratulations to uh, Don Tedarenko, Craig McPherson, and Fraser Abley is just Jimmy. Handles the stretch out beautifully, well rationed by Fraser on the head end, and proved best today. But just Jimmy for Don Tedarenko, Craig McPherson win our feature race today. All right here's the one. This is Champiosa for Judy Bradley and Jim Smith. Goes blinkers on today. Probably going to try and stay a little closer to the pace. I'm sitting just in behind slow paces and hasn't been able to gain any ground. There is speed in here with, remember, the Alamo, the three horse, but they're 
They got to stay close to him, I guess, if they're going to win today. Could work in 35 and 2 out of the gate, obviously with blinkers. So perhaps we'll see some improvement from the son of Numani. 20 to 1 if you take a shot on the one, Champiosa. Number two will be ATM. Not a bad fourth behind Roly Spirit. Had a good trip that day. Probably going to get another good trip in behind the speed. You might complete your superfecta or try. I didn't put him in the top two, but I guess he could come running on for third or fourth. Jose Sanchez, the king of the last race of late. One was Texas Humor yesterday. Been doing good in the seventh races throughout the season, Jose. Nine to one on ATM. Three will be Remember the Alamo. He's got good speed. He's going to get the lead. It's just a matter of whether he puts it all together and has some stamina to finish the race off. He will be uh, on top. The track's playing good for speed today. Might be a track conducive to his style. And Fraser looking to close things out with another winner. Four to one on the speedy, remember the Alamo. Number four will be Cillerone. This is the one I like. I think should get a good trip just in mid-pack. Hopefully laying fourth. But around there anyway. Got a good late kick. Got up for second behind Rolly Spirit in his last. The pace scenario wasn't great for him. These aren't the most reliable horses. You just got to take your shot with some of them and hope they, they run well that particular day because they're non-winners of two for a reason. But a good price on Cillerone at 4-1 to one for Brian Phillips. In the Shamrock Racing Stable and Silvino Morales. Five will be Setabello. This one looked good winning. Sat off a slow pace, but sprinted home nicely to win win the money under Chris Mamdine. Of course, he was injured in a morning uh, accident, and uh, Curry Powell will be the rider on Setabello. It's your favorite at five to two. That's the five Setabello. Six will be Tuxedo. A long shot chance in here. This one's made a barn change to the Rob Van Overshot outfit. Works are good. 47-3. 120 and 2 going six and a half out of the gate. That's not far off, but the final time will be in here. Brian Bood Ramsing does a lot of morning work for Rob, and so he's getting a shot. Nine to one. Good generous price on what I would consider the price play in here. Uh, number six, Tuxedo. Number seven will be Atomic Haze, off the pace runner that uh, takes advantage of uh, situations when there's a hot pace up front. I don't see it a crazy pace in here. But he gives a good account of himself. He comes on running. He's won for 27 lifetime, but he's got 11 seconds and thirds. So he's a good tractor horse. Or super factor, or super super high five, whatever gimmick you're playing here in the finale. And rounding up the field will be number eight. There goes my hero. Good win, two starts back, just one over De Niro. It wasn't the strongest of maiden wins. Came back to run a decent fourth behind Barney Google and remember the Alamo. And next out winner, Roly Spirit. He's not without a chance in here. The post was the only concern for me. If Antonio Reyes, actually Karen Kellowan now, put up Karen Kellowan on uh, There Goes My Hero, I uh, can get this horse out of the outside gate and get into a decent spot early, then it certainly enhances this horse's chances. I was just concerned. With the only reason I didn't pick him top three is the trip he's going to get, and I just thought he might be on the outside, and uh, which isn't the greatest place to be. 9-2 to two on There Goes My Hero. I closed it out with four, five, three, but long shot play definitely is a six tuxedo. Good little race to finish it off. A lot of competition in here. Really no standouts. Good betting board. Could pay some money this triactor superfecta. So good luck, everyone. Nine minutes to post. Don't forget, racing resumes next Saturday, Canada Day. Lots going on. Stakes races next weekend. Uh, 
First race both days at 2 o'clock. Let's send it up to Dan for the post parade of our seventh and final. The horses on the track, Hastings, race number seven. Field of eight, they're going to go six and one half for longs. Exactor, Triactor, Superfecta, Super High Five Wagering. Post time is eight minutes away. Rider at number eight, there goes my hero, is Kiron Kelawan. Here's the field number one, Champiosa. Owned by Judy Bradley, Leary, Cicheran in the saddle. Number two is ATM, owned by Joey Turcott, Jose Sanchez riding. Three, remember the Alamo, owned by the Swift Thoroughbreds Incorporated, the Riders Apprentice, Fraser Abley. Four, Cillerone, owned by the Shamrock Racing Stables Limited, Silvino Morales in the tack. Five, Cetabello, owned by Barb Taylor and Steve Taylor, Curry Powell ride. Six, Tuxedo, owned by Ralph Jeziek, the rider, Brian Budramsing. Seven, Atomic Hayes, owned by Charlene Miller, the rider, Ridge Balgobin. And the eight, there goes my hero, owned by Helen Climes, Joanne McDonald, and Sharon Pring. The rider now is Kieran Kelawan. Six minutes to post time. Please note number three, remember the Alamo returning to the paddock for an equipment adjustment. Don't forget live racing continues this coming week. It's Saturday and Sunday, Saturday Canada Day. Lots of activities going on here, so bring the family for Canada Day. Now let's go down to the paddock and Bailey Williams. Thank you, Dan, and congratulations to our winner of the 50-50 draw, Brenda. She's going to have some family here visiting from the island, going to take them all out for dinner, so it's going to a good cause all around, and thank you to the Firehouse Art Center for joining us here today. For the finale, I went to number four, and that is Cillerone. This horse has improved each effort. Two starts back, I think you could write that race off. <clears throat> Just didn't get involved at all if he's a little bit more on the pace here today. Number five, Setabello. This horse had a pretty impressive win here over Hastings last time out. Rounding out my top three is the number three. Remember the Alamo currently behind me here getting its saddle adjustment before he goes back out on to post parade. This horse gets to the front, hasn't really had the race go his way, and he folds a little bit coming into that final turn. A horse in here that's a little bit of a value play if you are playing the super high five is the six tuxedo eight to one currently and he has a work on june 7th six and a half from the gate in 120 and two that is quick enough to be able to be right on the top three or four in this caliber of race as a lot of these horses have been finishing in 119 and change so look for him definitely improving off of this race as it is his first start of the year but i went to the four and that is Cillerone. Four, five, three is how I see the finale. Best of luck with your wagers and be sure to join us next Saturday, Canada Day. There'll be lots of fun activities on hand and of course some great stake action coming to you as well. Best of luck here in the finale and we'll see you back next week.
Key West Ford remind you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings. The horses have reached the starting gate. And loading in for the nightcap, seventh and final event. Chapioza to the inside gate. ATM, gate two. Outside two have been loaded, Atomic Hayes, and there goes my hero. Celerone now coming forward. Remember the Alamo. 
and Satabello. Eight in, they're at the post. Tuxedo is a little fractious in the gate. Ryder is off the six, Tuxedo. Back aboard. There they go. Remember the Alamo sent right off for the early lead. From between runners now it's Setabello. Up on the outside is Tuxedo. Then at the rail we have Champiosa. Outside is Atomic Haze. There goes my hero. Cillerone has one beat. That's ATM. Into the clubhouse turn they go. And remember the Alamo leads it by a head. Setabello pressing on the outside. Two and a half lengths back now. Tuxedo from the outside. From the inside, it's Champiosa. Then there goes my hero. Down at the fence is Cillerone on the outside at Tom McKay's trailer ATM. Opening quarter, 22 and 4. Three furlongs to run. From the inside, remember the Alamo. From the outside, Setabello. Then Champiosa. Tuxedo. Moving three wide, there goes my hero, as well as Atomic Hayes, Cillerone, and ATM. Half 46 and four, midway on the final turn now, and it is now there goes my hero with a short lead. At the rail we have, remember the Alamo, and Atomic Hayes has now taken command, and down the lane they come. It's Atomic Hayes on the inside, there goes my hero. Cillerone on the outside, he's a little too late. There goes my hero to win it. It'll be Cillerone second, close for third. We had Atomic Hayes, Champiosa, and Satabello. On the board, the unofficial winner, number eight. There goes my hero. Number four, Cillerone second. Photo for third, hold all tickets. Please note the stewards are conducting a review of the stretch drive. Eight, four in a photo and a stewards review. In the photo for third, number seven, Atomic Hayes third, number one, Champiosa fourth, fifth, number five, Setabello, super high five numbers, eight, four, seven, one, and five.
In the winner's enclosure, unofficial winner for a seven, number eight, there goes my hero. Owned by Helen Climbs, Joanne McDonald, and Sharon Pring. Steve Henson, conditions, assisted by Robbie Henson. And the winning rider, Kiron Kellawan. There goes my hero, a three-year-old gelding by Storm Victory out of Dash It Darling. Bred in BC by Elton Gunther. Please note the stewards review has been completed. There will be no change on the board. Stewards have ruled that any interference did not affect the outcome of the race. Eight, four, seven, one, and five. The result is now official. Just a reminder, live racing does continue this coming weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Come join us on Canada Day for many activities as we celebrate the nation's birthday.
Prices up on the board. The exactor was thirty-eight dollars and ninety cents. Two dollar try was two thirty-seven seventy. Pick four, you need four of four, return fifty-three dollars. Twenty-three cents. Super high five, nine sixty-eight fourteen. Twenty cent super was two hundred fifty-six twenty-eight. Late double was sixty-nine fifty. And the pick three, three of three needed, $91.40. That'll wrap up our live program here at Hastings for this Sunday afternoon. Don't forget live racing does continue this coming Saturday. Canada Day first race will be 2 p.m. Claim in that last race, number four, Cillerone. Claimed by Cheryl Benson, Kathy and Kelly Rycroft, Dennis Dale and Tabitha Perry, trainer. Nicole Rycroft. Our gaming floor remains open as well as simulcasting until 8 p.m. Thank you for watching and wagering on Hastings Racecourse. Drive safely. See you soon. Good night.
Five in, they're at the post. There they go. Texas Legacy pops out of there for an early lead. Penalty to Rangers, though, takes away the lead. Let Me 20 gets away in third. It's Sweet as Honey in fourth. Stolo Spirit is your early trailer. Under the line, it is Penalty to Rangers. Out there on a loose two and a half length lead. Down on the inside it is Texas Legacy up on the outside now. It is Let Me 20. It's about five lengths back to the sweet as sunny and four to Stolo Spirit. As they run past the half mile marker, the opening quarter in 22 and four. To the back stretch they go. Penalty to Rangers leads it now by just over a length. Battling for second there is Texas Legacy on the inside and Let Me 20 on the outside. Six lengths for the back, Sweet as Honey, and five to Stolo Spirit. As they run to the quarter mile pole, a half up 47 and two. And penalty to Rangers continues to lead it. Texas Legacy trying to give another shot. It's two lengths back to let me 20. Three for the back, Sweet as Honey. And Stolo Spirit. Eighth of a mile from home. And down the lane they come. It is penalty to the Rangers now clear by three. Five in, uh, they're at the post. There they go. Texas Legacy pops out of there for an early lead. Penalty to Rangers, though, takes away the lead. Let Me 20 gets away in third. It's Sweet as Honey in fourth. Stolo Spirit is the early trailer. Under the line, it is Penalty to Rangers out there on a loose two and a half length lead. Down on the inside is Texas Legacy. Up on the outside now is Let Me 20. It's about five lengths back to Sweet as Honey and four to Stolo Spirit. As they run past a half mile marker, the opening quarter in 22 and four. To the back stretch they go. Penalty to Rangers leads it now by just over a length. Battling for second there is Texas Legacy on the inside and Let Me 20 on the outside. Six lengths for the back, Sweet as Honey, and five to Stolo Spirit. As they run to the quarter mile pole, the half up 47 and two, and penalty to Rangers continues to lead it. Texas Legacy trying to give it another shot. It's two lengths back to Let Me 20. Three for the back, Sweet as Honey, and Stolo Spirit. Eighth of a mile from home, and down the lane they come. It is penalty to Rangers now clear by three. Texas Legacy trying to hold second, but penalty to Rangers will win it. Texas Legacy holds on for second. Let me 23rd, Sweet as Honey and Stolo Spirit.
Davy Grand now set. Five in. They're at the post. There they go. Baby Grand quick at the break and on the early lead. Darting to the inside was Juvie 2 unseating the rider. As they pass by us now it is Baby Grand with a short lead. Put Soldier down on the inside. On the outside is Wise Market. And now trying to take a hold here is Driller. Into the clubhouse turn they go. And it is with the lead. Into the turn Baby Grand by a length and a half. The outrider has picked up the horse. The loose horse has been taken in hand by the outrider as they turn for the back stretch. It's Baby Grand leading it over Wise Market sitting in second. Foot Soldier is third and Driller is fourth. The opening quarter in 23 and two. As they head towards the 5 6 marker, Baby Grand continues to lead it. Pressing on the outside is Wise Market. Foot Soldier down towards the inside and Driller is only two and a half off it. The half, 47 and two. Midway on the final turn, and Baby Grant down on the inside, leading away through his foot soldier on the outside, Wise Market and Driller, and down the lane they come. Baby Grant with the lead. Wise Market trying to get to her late. Deep stretch down, Baby Grant. Wise Market, one last surge, but Baby Grant goes all the way. Wise Market second, foot soldier third, Driller fourth. at the post. There they go. Patty Dioro from the outside. Kalamazoo's from between rivals. Now try to split runners. There goes You Don't Own Me. At the rail is Gorky Park. And Vancouver's Hunter is the early trailer. Rounding the far turn, Kalamazoo has the lead now by a neck. You Don't Own Me pressing on the outside. Patty Dioro is a bit of a wide trip in third. Gorky Park had to take a hold as he was going to run off on horse's heels. And Vancouver's Hunter, the trailer, opening quarter, 24 and 1. Through the stretch, you don't know me on the outside. Kalamazoo set the rail. Then they're stacked three across the track. Gorky Park, Vancouver's Hunter, and Patty Dioro. Into the clubhouse turn they go as they go into the turn with Kalamazoo from the rail with the lead still by a neck. You don't own me, second by a length and a half. It's Gorky Park at the rail, third. Patty Dioro wide on the course, and in between them, Vancouver's Hunter. Half is 47 and three. Now three furlongs to run, and it is You Don't Own Me on the outside by a head. Kalamazoo second by two and a half. Gorky Park is third, Patty Dioro fourth. Trailer, Vancouver's Hunter. Quarter mile from home, six furlongs went up and went 12 and three. You Don't Own Me now takes the lead and leads it by a little over a length. Kalamazoo, Gorky Park, Patty Dioro, and Vancouver's Hunter. Eighth of a mile from home, and it is You Don't Own Me with the lead. Gorky Park emerges on the outside. Kalamazoo set the rail. New leader now, it's Gorky Park. And Gorky Park goes on to lead it and win it by just under two. You Don't Own Me second, Kalamazoo's third. Patty Dioro and Vancouver's Hunter.
Six in. They're at the post. There they go. From the rail, Ari Kara on the early lead. Candy Katie, Anami, and another sunny day, widest of all. As they pass by us now, Ari Kara and another sunny day hookup. Two lengths back is Anami in third. Racinos at the rail. Candy Katie on the outside. Timeless shrug. Six back in sixth. Into the clubhouse turn they go. Ari Kara from the rail by a head. Pressing on the outside now is another sunny day. They've opened up five on Anami. Candy Katie, Racino, Timeless Shrug, the trailer. As they head down the back stretch, the opening quarter, 22 flat, and it's Airy Kara by a neck. Another sunny day, still second by five and a half. Then Anami in third on the outside, Candy Katie. Racino's at the rail, and Timeless Shrug, half, solid, 45 and two. Midway on the turn, Airy Kara now opens up by two and a half. Another sunny day, Racino closing ground at the rail. Anami and Candy Katie, eighth of a mile from home, and Ari Kara comes home with a six-length lead. Racino, the closest pursuer, Anami is third. Ari Kara by four, and Ari Kara will win it in the clear. Racino second, Anami third, another sunny day, fourth. They're at the post. There they go. They've all come away well. 151, Sloop John B. Vi for the early lead. Debatable, tucked in in between runners. Ehrlich's on the outside. Crapolis right there with him. IBC and you is the early trailer. Rounding the far turn, and Sloop John B. shows the way. 151 is second on the outside at the rail. It's debatable in third. Ehrlich is fourth. Trappel is fifth. Three lengths back. IBC and you. The opening quarter, they dawdled through it in 25 and one. Through the stretch for the first time. And Sloop John B. shows the way. It's 151 in between runners. Ehrlich now ranging up on the outside. Debatable down towards the inside. Trappel is a little wide. Three lengths for the back is IBC and you. Into the clubhouse turn they go, and it is still Sloop John B. with a short lead. 151 sits second by two with Ehrlich in third. Half mile to run, that half went up in 49 and one. As they head down the back stretch, Sloop John B. shows the way by just over a length. 151 tracking in second. Two lengths back, it's Ehrlich in third. Trappel is fourth. IBC and you on the outside of Debatable. Five sixteenths from home, six furlongs in, one fourteen flat, and Sloop John B leads it by a length from the outside. Ehrlich still right there now is one fifty one. Four lengths back, Trapolis, IBC and you, and debatable as a turn for home, eighth of a mile from home, and it is Sloop John B with the lead. Down the lane they come. Sloop John B. Ehrlich's on the outside. 151 right there. Sloop John B. Ehrlich with one last surge, but it will be Sloop John B. going all the way. Ehrlich will be second. 151 third.
six in. They're at the post. There they go. From between rivals, just Jimmy put on the early lead, but stay fantastic. Drives up the inside. Right there at the rail, shotgun rider gets away in third. Followed by my college fund in fourth. Family biz and Fort Langley is the early trailer. They're on the turn and stay fantastic from the rail. Pressing on the outside, just Jimmy. Length and a half back now, my college fund's got a good spot in third. At the rail, shotgun rider is fourth. Then family biz and Fort Langley. As they pass by us down for the first time, 24 and two the opening panel. Three across the track, stay fantastic. In between is just Jimmy. And on the outside, my college fun. Down at the fence now we have Shotgun Rider in fourth, followed by Family Biz and Fort Langley. As they run past the half mile marker, the half went up in 48 and two. From the inside, stay fantastic by a nose. Still right there, just Jimmy, second by three quarters of a length, moving up on the outside, my college fun. Perfect spot at the rail for Shotgun Rider if he's good enough. Two and a half length back, Family Biz and Fort Langley. Six furlongs, 112 and four. Quarter mile from home. Stay fantastic as game from the fence. Right there though on the outside is just Jimmy. Two and a half lengths back by College Fun, followed by Shotgun Rider and Family Biz as they turn for home. Just Jimmy with a short lead. Stay fantastic, won't go away. And down the lane they come. It is now just Jimmy with the lead. Just Jimmy scores by two. Stay fantastic second. Fort Langley rallies up for third. Family Biz fourth. Back aboard. There they go. Remember the Alamo sent right off for the early lead. From between runners now it's Santabello. Up on the outside is Tuxedo. Then at the rail we have Champiosa. Outside is Atomic Hayes. There goes my hero. Cilarone has one beat. That's ATM. Into the clubhouse turn they go. And remember the Alamo leads it by a head. Santabello pressing on the outside. Two and a half lengths back now. Tuxedo from the outside. From the inside, it's Champiosa. Then there goes my hero. Down at the fence is Cilarone on the outside. Atomic Hayes, trailer ATM. Opening quarter, 22 and four. Three furlongs to run. From the inside, remember the Alamo. From the outside, Santabello. Then Champiosa. Tuxedo moving three wide. There goes my hero as well as Atomic Hayes, Cilarone, and ATM. Half 46 and four, midway on the final turn now, and it is now there goes my hero with a short lead. At the rail we have, remember the Alamo, and Atomic Hayes has now taken command, and down the lane they come. It's Atomic Hayes on the inside, there goes my hero. Cilarone on the outside, he's a little too late. There goes my hero to win it. It'll be, Cilarone second, close for third. We had Atomic Hayes 